Here's what to expect in this car review. Launch control. Oh my. <laughs> and how does this thing sound? Death mode and super death mode. And what's cool is you're gonna actually do like brake stand burnouts in this. And donuts. I'm actually not that cool. Like, I'm being honest, I'm not that cool. And overall, this interior looks pretty nice, especially in white. How about this against six Miatas? <laughs> I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty BMW M eight competition cabriolet in the middle of winter with launch control. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that so, launch is pretty hard <laughs> considering the conditions. The M eight fifty I was pretty fast as it was, but this is like crazy fast. Yeah, this is next level. This is about a hundred extra horsepower on top of the M850i that we drove. Horsepower and torque. 617 horsepower, 535 pound-feet of torque from a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. Now obviously we're in the middle of winter, so that was not zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.3 seconds, but this can do that in the summer. Okay, so this is all wheel drive. Yes, it is, X drive. But we can also configure it to be just rear wheel drive and do burnouts and do donuts. Yeah, so should we show the viewers that by pressing the M2 button right now? And that is how a donut looks in the winter in the M8 Competition Cabriolet. And if you're wondering why we're driving this in the winter with the top down, we had the chance to drive it, we didn't want to say no, and we weren't going to drive a cabriolet not top down. Exactly. So we're going to assess this for what it is in the winter, but it's still a fantastic car. And it actually shows that you can drive insane horsepower cars like this in the winter just fine. Yeah, because even with all the heat and stuff, like this has a neck scarf, heated seats, heated steering wheel, you put the windows up, it's not bad. No, it's not. My comparison is if you go skiing, you're out in the cold anyways, you're just doing physical activity. This is the same thing. You're just driving a car, which is like just as fun as skiing sometimes. Pretty much. And this also shows you the level of engineering with the traction control and everything like that. So I'm going to send it into cliche corner and get just a little bit sideways because it's a little bit sketchy. See, it's not that bad. Handling is going to be a little bit difficult to talk about, but overall, this thing powers through cliche corners sideways. <laughs> but we have been driving it throughout the Christmas break. And yeah. when it was dry, like, this thing is absolutely ripping it. Yeah, we already thought that the M850i was really, really fast. And this is faster, but it's not like that, that much faster. No, I thought for an M8 competition, like I'd be pooping my pants every time I'm driving it, but it's but compared to the M850i, it's like, it's kind of similar. Yeah, so the theme of this car seems to be that it's a lot, it's too much, but it's also not enough. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, but let's talk about this engine. The power delivery is insane, just like the MA50i. This is just a little bit extra because it does have pretty much about 100 extra horsepower. Yeah, it's always instant power. It's really, really fast. The power band is basically unlimited. And how does this thing sound? Kind of okay. It does sound kind of okay. Like it's got good crackles and pops and stuff, and it's like very deep and throaty, but it, it feels just like not authentic. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing with the 8 Series. I do like it for a V8, but I don't like it in comparison to the S63, which this would compete with. Yeah, that sounds way better. And even on the BMW lineup, I was in love with that M4 sound. This just doesn't have, this is more like the Z4 where it's like, eh. It's grunty, it's got these aggressive sounds, but it's just overall, it kind of does nothing for me. And the biggest problem I found is when you start up the car, like say in your parking garage, I guess whenever it's starting up, it's such a low frequency and so loud that it like literally kills your eardrums. It's got a really bassy tone to it. Like it's so deep and even with the exhaust off, like it's hard for everyday stuff sometimes. And you can change the exhaust mode, so let's have a listen to both on and off. <laughs> Oh, and one major difference from the M850i is this does not have rear wheel steering. I don't really notice that much of a difference. This does still hide its overall size very well, but I don't miss it. So now let's talk about the transmission. It is a ZF 8-speed auto, which we did love in the MA50i, and I still love it in this. Yeah, it's nice. Pretty decent paddles and everything. Yeah, the paddles are all right. And we do have a different shifter in this. We don't have a crystal shifter. We've got that weird kind of M-style shifter yeah. where it's kind of like a simulated manual type thing. So I, I feel like we've got M5 competition stuff in here because we've got the M5 
competition head-up display and the M5 competition shifter. And it's it's not my favorite BMW one. They've got like six better ones. Yeah, and there's actually a bunch of different stuff that they changed in terms of the drive modes and how you adjust them. And we'll get to that in a second. But overall, I don't like what they did. And so like we mentioned earlier, this does have X drive. It is all wheel drive. It is obviously primarily rear biased and you could definitely feel it. Now you can control rear wheel drive and all wheel drive with our M buttons, which I have programmed into death mode and super death mode. <laughs> well, the first one's not really that bad. It's kind of bad, but it's not that it's bad. It's like everything's sport plus. Okay, now let's get into the drive modes because it's super confusing. But the one thing they did introduce with this and the drive modes is a better gauge cluster setup. Yeah, so there's this new button called M mode, which actually changes your gauges and it also changes your level of safety features. Yeah, when you click the button, it'll turn it to that new style that we're really stoked about that in real life we don't really care that much about. Okay, so the three modes we have are road, sport, and track. And the only reason we have track is because we're in the competition model. And this has nothing to do with drive mode stuff. So your suspension, your engine is still not affected by these modes. But what kind of sucks is, say you're doing the lane keep stuff. You can't have the cool gauge up. You gotta go back to the old style one. And the next button we have is setup, which used to be hard buttons in every other end model, but now it's all in the infotainment. So that's where you change your chassis, your engine, your steering, and your brakes. So you really need to set up everything beforehand in this and then program it to your buttons. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing, especially at first, and it does take a little bit more to get used to than traditional M models. But like traditional M models, we still do have our traction control button right here. So we have traction regular, we have traction four wheel drive MDM sport, and then we have traction off. And on top of that, we have rear wheel drive mode. And you can only get to rear wheel drive mode with traction off. And what's cool is you can actually do like brake stand burnouts in this. Yes, you can. And donuts. <laughs> Let's show that clip again. <laughs> and since this is the M8 and the 8 series overall, this is a GT car. So it's still very, very comfortable, even though it's called the competition model. Yeah, it's super comfortable. Yeah, so for daily driving, even if you get the M8 competition, it's still gonna be super comfortable. Sport Plus is a little bit stiff for suspension, but it's not as stiff as like an AMG would ever be. But with those red steering wheel M buttons, you kind of just do like one quick click when you need to do some ripping, and then one click click back to comfort. Exactly, it works really, really well. And this also has a brake by wire system, which you can adjust through the infotainment. We haven't driven this on the track and I haven't really noticed a difference between comfort and sport on the street. So I don't really mind it. I'm sure it's gonna be a little bit weird on track. They just need to add more and more stuff to justify the really, really high price tag, I think. Pretty much, but I mean, they've added a lot of horsepower, so. Oh my God, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's get you into the driver's seat. There's still a lot to talk about. Launch control. Send it. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it's Wow! <laughs> it feels really fast, but it doesn't feel that much faster than the M850i. That's the problem with I it. I know, it's just like, it's a lot, but it's not enough. Okay, so let's get into inside the car. What did they change for the M850i? So the gauge cluster is the main thing that we can have that cool mode where the tag goes up. It's still not like 911 good or anything. It's all kind of useless. Yeah, I really don't like it either. But with the tack, if we have the head-up display off, we get cool shift lights that show up in the middle, which is nice, they go brrr in yellow. Then if we had the head-up display on, we've got that M5 competition style head-up display that takes up pretty much your whole windshield. Same with the X3M, which I hate. But there's a reduced mode, which brings it down, which is much better. And then besides the shifter being different, our infotainment's pretty much the same. We can say, hey, BMW, and access all our shortcuts. But do you know what sucks about this model that I really, really miss? What's that? No hand gestures, because there's no room for a sensor. Uh, <laughs> like, I catch myself doing this and nothing happened. It sucked so well, much. Well, you can still talk to it, so there's that. Yeah, but I really <laughs> like the finger thing. So we do have wireless Apple CarPlay. Well, I don't think we have the wireless Android Auto yet. No, we don't, but BMW has announced it, so 2020, but we here's did, hope. But you showed me that article that uh, old car infotainments are stealing all your data, so now I'm super freaked out about yes, everything. Yes, every car is stealing data from <laughs> everyone about everything, apparently. Yeah, so uh, not the Plymouth Prowler, not the Raptor. <laughs> That's right, so be careful. That's oh, it. we're not allowed to mention it. It's the only those. time we'll bring it up this right. year. It's a 2019 still when we film this. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to 2020, guys. Then also in the infotainment, we've got a new menu called M Menu. Yeah, so you configure your M1 and M2 buttons and your head-up display and a bunch of stuff there. And your instrument panel. I guess that's the only bunch of stuff left. <laughs> and then in the command center now, we've got buttons for our cabriolet top to go up and down. And we've got buttons for our neck scarfs. Yeah, Mercedes calls it the neck scarf. We're just gonna call it that because it's a really good name. Yeah, right here, blows heat right at your neck. It's uh, very effective on a day like today. I'm actually not that cold. Like, I'm being honest, I'm not that cold. And it's just at freezing. Yes. Zero degrees Celsius. 
not whatever it is in Fahrenheit, which isn't zero. <laughs> it's like the freezing point, which doesn't make sense. 36. Guys, join the metric system. That's right. The dock side. <laughs> and then with this shifter, we can now also adjust our shift speed again, which we could in the M5 competition, but we couldn't in the M850s. That's right. But this shifter is such a pain compared to the rest because you have to go right to go into drive, then right for sport, but sport doesn't do sport, it just does paddles, and then left and up for reverse. Yeah, they tried to simulate a manual and it's just not the best. You know how in Volvos we always end up in neutral? Yeah. In this I always end up in neutral. Same here. <laughs> I'm like I'm like pulling down to go into drive and I'm just like changing a gear that's not, not in. Yep. And then we have some carbon fiber down here. We got a bunch of gloss black, which I'm not a fan of. And then we have a bunch of leather and overall this interior looks pretty nice, especially in white. Yes, the quilted seats. My wife was so impressed by all that stuff and she thought it was really cool how there was a nice little flower in the speaker. Yeah. That's all there, that's the design of the speaker and like the interior light, which also looks very nice. Same old colors, but the back seats, there's no room to sit. No, absolutely no room. How about the front seats? Front seats are super comfortable on both sides. But there's no massage. I know. I'm like, yo. I was looking for it too. What, what, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mercedes well, would have a massage. They would. <laughs> I noticed that you've been using this little section that you slide out for your seat, I guess, for thigh support. Yeah, I've actually been enjoying thigh support now. Yeah, it's kind of a pain because I got to put that away because I don't need thigh support, I guess. But like, it's good that you're actually using it because I think we talked about it like a year ago. We did, and we didn't really know what it was there for, so now I'm using it and enjoying it. And we do have heated and cooled seats. I am enjoying my cooled seats today. Just kidding. Straight <laughs> hot. And then we also have a heated steering wheel. Okay, so we got a cup holder that fits a small cup. This is a medium cup today. Wireless charger is really nice. And yeah. I have a new theory. So putting your phone in a wireless charger that's a pain to get to behind coffee cups makes it safer because there's less chance you're gonna get to your car. So I think wireless Apple CarPlay with a wireless charger that's super hidden is the safest thing now. And you'll still have your vertical USB port, which I imagine is waterproof, and you'll probably spill coffee into it anyways. We got a really fancy M8 competition logo above that. Yeah, I, I like that. But like black on black logos on the whole car, it's hard to see, but it it's always sees the lines. Yeah. You think it's just some dude who just painted the grills on his uh, <laughs> M240i? Pretty much. And I guess we should check the visors. Ooh, this looks, eh. No, it won't. Three, no. two, one. Ah, come on guys. And this also has all the lane keep stuff that the other BMWs have. So you've got traffic jam assist at a certain speed. It watches your eyes. Yeah, the lane keep works pretty well. I feel like this one bounced around a little bit. I still think Genesis, Kia, Hyundai has the best overall lane keep this year. And this also has the 360 camera that spins all the way around. It's very nice, very clear. And it's got parking assist, which I used, had my hands up. Uh, and it parked me out of the lane like a typical BMW. <laughs> but it that's, does work it most of really the time. It works really well. There yeah. was no other car next to it, and that's why it just looked funny. Yeah. So now let's get to the looks. Do you think it's a big improvement over the 50i? No. <laughs> I, I like the front end because it makes it more M. Like, you know how the X3M, the M2 competition just like opens up that grill a bit more? It's definitely a little bit more M, but it's not that much more M. But I think it's like that little part that counts. And I think this wins for not having any fake grill at the front at all. Yeah, everything is real except for the side vents. Well, that's on the side. Okay. <laughs> but, but that is a fake vent. And there's a lot of cool carbon fiber everywhere. And we should also pop the hood to show the $1,200 carbon fiber <laughs> engine cover. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we also have a little carbon fiber spoiler at the back. What do you think of that? It looks so small. It's a little bit too small. Like if you're gonna put on a carbon fiber spoiler, maybe a little bit bigger. And then the side body lines and everything, I think in blue, this looks so like 90s Mustang to me. I, it kind of does. And these wheels do get a pass. They're not the regular competition wheels, but we are driving this in the winter, so they look fine for what this is. And what is the Continental recommended tire for the BMW M8 Competition Cabriolet? The Conti Winter Contact TS830P. So how about the exhaust tips on this? Real M exhaust tips, no fakery going on here. I love them. How about the back end? Do you like it? It's okay. I like the tail lights, just like all the other ones. It has a lot of like weird body lines around the corner of the rear bumper that like from certain angles just looks ridiculous. Yeah, the diffuser looks good, but I agree with like the side profile kind of looks weird in the back. But overall, it looks really good. It looks good at the top off, looks good at the top down. I think this is a very good looking BMW convertible. It is, it definitely looks good. We do have the M mirrors, so you know it's a real M. But do you like the looks of this more than the S63? No. I know, hey. I just don't, I, I it, love the S63. This looks sportier, the S63 just looks more mean. And you know what's crazy is the S63 is still the old model. We still haven't seen the new one, which I don't know if I'm gonna like more. And before you send it into cliche corner, I'm gonna put you into track mode. So I'm gonna hold M mode and then set you up so you're not distracted. Turns off the screen? Yep. So you can send it, no distractions. How's that? Even in the snow, this thing is pretty good. Like I don't feel like sketched out at all. 
Like barely any slippage too when I'm flooring it. And how does the steering feel? Normal, nothing weird. I don't really like it. I didn't really like the M850i steering either, but this is slightly better than the M850i steering. Is this better than the M5 competition steering? Yes. Okay. But it does a little bit of that weirdness. So like do do a little bit of a jiggle and just kind of yeah, let yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, okay, ready? See, it does that like shimmy shake thing. So when I see the same- Not that you're ever gonna let go of the steering wheel, but just for illustration purposes. So when I see the same head up display in the car and the same shifter, and then you said it's a very similar motor, I assume they just take all those parts and slap it right in. They pretty much do. So let's get to the price. It's obviously a lot of money. Starts at $173,500. Canadian. And this one is optioned out to $189,200. This is like a $200,000 car. Yeah. It doesn't have massage seats. No, it doesn't. But it is really fast. It is really fast, but so is the MA50i. Like only a little bit faster than that. And this doesn't look that much crazier than the MA50i. It really doesn't. And I think this is probably the first time where I'm gonna recommend the slower model personally I think just get the MA50i over this you, you don't need this no cuz this isn't enough but it's also too much in certain ways yeah it's like it's not enough extra on top of the MA50i yeah. even though it's an hundred extra horsepower but I kind of expect like 150 200 extra horsepower yeah it, it's kind of weird personally if we're talking about two-door BMWs I would rather just buy two BMW M2 competitions no question so would i but that's not the crowd that's probably shopping for this but yeah both of us agree on that and then how about other grand tours so you'd probably take an s63 over this i would how about the lc500 looks wise alone since i still haven't driven one yes and the convertible is new for 2020 as well which we haven't driven and probably will never get to drive yeah maybe who knows would this compete with an aston martin yeah i would i'd probably go aston martin over this even though it's got the old Mercedes infotainment and stuff, I think it just has more pizzazz and like the looks gets you through more. Yeah, I totally agree on that. How about this against six Miatas? <laughs> I would take this. I would take six Miatas. Imagine giving a Miata to all your friends. Okay, you if you're Miata giving club. them away, but otherwise like- What, what else am you I do with do? six Miatas? I don't know, crash it, destruction derby. <laughs> so let us know what you think of the BMW M8 Competition Cabriolet. Let us know where it falls in line with your Cabriolets and your GT cars. See you next time.